Honeywell models 411 and 412 are examples of strain gauge type differential pressure and pressure transmitters. The model 411 will convert differential pressures to 4 to 20 milliamps DC. It is referred to as a delta P to I transmitter. The model 412 will convert the process pressure of a fluid to 4 to 20 milliamps DC. It is called a PP to I transmitter. We will first study the delta P to I model. The piezo resistive strain gauge serves as the differential pressure detector. It is a fully active wheatstone bridge that is diffused into a single crystal of silicon. It is not the typical bonded strain gauge that stretches and changes configuration during stress. The piezo resistive strain gauge is a solid state device, much the same as a transistor or a diode. The silicon chip is delicately fabricated in a manner to cause it to be pressure sensitive. The highest pressure is applied to the surface in which the bridge resistors are diffused. The low pressure is applied to the other side of the silicon wafer. The differential pressure acting on the sensor causes a minute deflection, which in turn changes the resistance of the strain gauge, causing an unbalance in the bridge. Gold wires connect the bridge resistors to a flexible strip. The flexible strip goes through a sealed header and connects to the solid state electronic circuit board. The circuit board furnishes a constant current to the strain gauge bridge circuit and receives a signal from the sensor that it converts to the 4 to 20 milliamp DC transmission signal for the receivers in the transmitter loop. This is the meter body of the transmitter. And this is the electrical housing for the electronic circuit board. This is the high pressure head. And this is the low pressure head. This view shows the body and diaphragm with the heads removed. The strain gauge sensor is sealed in an inert silicon fluid, which is contained by the high and low pressure diaphragms. The overload protector protects the sensor and diaphragms from an overrange in either direction up to 2,000 PSI. The meter body temperature limits are minus 40 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The ambient temperature limits are minus 40 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This should be kept in mind in the advent of an installation requiring steam or electrical tracing. This is a simplified schematic of a strain gauge transmitter. A change in pressure unbalances the bridge by increasing or decreasing the bridge resistors, as shown by the up or down arrows. Twenty-four volts DC is applied across the power positive and the power negative terminals. The bridge unbalance is fed as a negative input to the bridge output amplifier A-1.
This causes the output of A-1 to drive the base of transistor Q-8 in a more negative direction, causing it to conduct more current. The output of Q-8 is the 4 to 20 milliamp DC transmitted signal. The increased current flow through the feedback resistors brings the bridge back to balance. The bridge constant current source maintains a constant current across the bridge independent of the supply voltage. It also provides temperature compensation. The voltage regulator maintains a regulated 8 volt DC supply for the operational amplifier A-1. The coarse and fine span adjustments are shown on this circuit schematic. The span is maximum when the screw is in position A. The span pot is the fine span adjustment. The relation of the span width to the screw location is shown in this table. This is a schematic of the coarse and fine zero adjustments for one of the available circuit boards. Note that there are only two screw positions for the coarse zero on this board, namely position numbers 2 and 5. The circuit boards are basically the same. They differ in the percent of suppression and elevation possible the amount of course zero adjustments, and the range of the transmitter. Even though the circuit boards are basically the same, they are not interchangeable. This table from the instruction manual gives the different circuit board numbers. Coarse span adjustments are located here. And this is the fine span adjustment. These are the six coarse zero adjustments. Some of the circuit boards do not use them all. This is the fine zero adjustment. Some transmitters are equipped with the optional feature of the fine zero adjustment being external. Five ranges are available in the Honeywell Model 411 Delta P transmitter. The ranges cover spans from 0 to 3 to 0 to 1,000 inches of water. The ranges are shown graphically here. Now work exercise number one in your workbook. The primary difference between the Model 412 process pressure transmitter and the Delta P transmitter is in the center section which houses the sensor. The pressure transmitter has only one process connection instead of the two used for the differential pressure version. This is a cross-section of the center of the pressure transmitter. Note that only one side of the silicon-filled diaphragm section is exposed to the process. This view shows the process side of the diaphragm with the head removed. 
the pressure range is determined by the selected body assembly. The over range limit is twice the upper range limit for a given body assembly. This table shows the ranges available. Other diaphragm materials are available. The adjustable range for a given pressure meter body is normally 3 to 1. For example, the 90 PSI one can be calibrated from 0 to 30 to 0 to 90 PSI. The rangeability can be turned down to 5 to 1 if required. The ranges are shown graphically here. Like the delta P to I transmitter, the limit of suppression and elevation is determined by the circuit board used. An add-on kit is not necessary for suppression or elevation. The suppression or elevation adjustment is made with the zero adjustment. If we have the 15% suppressed to 15% elevated zero circuit board and a 90 PSI range diaphragm assembly, it means that it can be calibrated to these limits. This simply says the starting point of any range for this combination should not be more than 13.5 PSI. The span should not be less than 30 PSI. And the high end of the range should not be more than 90 PSI. Therefore, it would be possible to calibrate the transmitter to a range such as plus 10 to 60 PSI. The 15% elevated means that the range may be adjusted below 0 PSI to approximately 15% of the upper range limit. Therefore, it would be possible to calibrate our 90 PSI meter body and circuit board combination to a range such as minus 10 to 50 PSI or minus 13.5 to 60 PSI. The Vutronic transmitters generally use a 24 volt DC power supply, but other DC voltages are permissible. The power is connected to these two terminals by the polarity indicated. The lead wires furnished with the transmitter are red and yellow. Red is positive and yellow is negative. The test jacks are provided in order to use a millivolt meter for calibrating the transmitter output. The test jacks are across a 2.5 ohm precision resistor in the output circuit. At 4 milliamps, the voltage drop across the resistor is 10 millivolts, and at 20 milliamps, it is 50 millivolts. Either a millivolt meter shown here or a digital voltmeter may be used. With 24 volts DC supply, the loop resistance, including the signal wires, should not exceed 630 ohms. Both the Model 411 and 412 transmitters are intrinsically safe and suitable for Class 1, Groups B, C, and D, Division 1 of the National Electrical Code. 
be sure to remember that for one item in an electronic loop to be intrinsically safe, all other items in the loop must also be safe. The Viewtronic transmitter is connected in series with a resistor, with one receiver only in the instrument loop. Since Honeywell receivers require a 1 to 5 volt DC signal, the range resistor is 250 ohms for the 4 to 20 milliamp DC transmitter. Other receivers in the loop are connected in parallel across the range resistor. If the transmitter has a local indicator, the circuit should be protected with a diode. In case the indicator opened up, the diode would conduct and the loop current would not be interrupted. Now work exercise number two in your workbook. 